Hello, welcome to the video lecture on the poem A River by A.K. Ramanujan. Let's begin with a short introduction to the poet. A.K. Ramanujan is a man of eclectic talents. He was a poet, a scholar, a folklorist, a playwright and a translator who made a mark for himself in all these fields. His poetry was considered to be a delightful mix of original thought and enigmatic style. Ramanujan wrote poems both in English and Kannada and was interested in concepts like hybridity and transnational currents. He was honored with the Padma Shri in 1976 and was posthumously awarded the Kendra Sahitya Academy Award in 1999. His major poetry collections are The Striders that came out in 1966, Relations in 1971, Selected Poems published in 1976, Second Sight in 1986, and Collected Poems published in 1995. A short overview of the poem, A River. A River is a poem that offers a very powerful commentary on the nature of human suffering. The poet contrasts the vivid beauty of nature with the devastating damages it can wreak on human life. In a highly ironic manner, he points out how people are often indifferent to the suffering of their fellow beings. And Ramanujan uses the picturesque city of Madurai as his backdrop to highlight the tragedy that unfolds when river Vaigai floods the city. He explores the dichotomy of nature as he describes the river that appears to be deceptively beautiful but can also turn deadly. We now move on to the detailed analysis of the poem. In Madurai, city of temples and poets, who sang of cities and temples, every summer a river dries to a trickle in the sand, bearing the sand ribs, straw and women's hair clogging the water gates at the rusty bars under the bridges with patches of repair all over them the wet stones glistening like sleepy crocodiles, the dry ones, shaven water buffaloes lounging in the sun. The poets only sang of the floods. So here, the poet depicts Madurai as a city of temples and poets. It is a city that is rich in its scenic beauty and cultural heritage. Naturally, it is a city of poets, poets who sang to its wondrous glory. The poets must also have sung about river Vaigai in all its resplendent beauty. Here, Ramanujan focuses on a rather bleak picture instead. The image of the almost dried up river in summer. There is hardly any water and one can make out the outline of the sand rips along the riverbed. The rusty bars of the water gates are clogged with straw and hair. So here Ramanujan depicts a rather squalid picture and this starkly contrasts with the usual scenic images that are portrayed by the poets. He talks about how uh, the straw and women's hair clogging the water gates at the rusty bars under the bridges with patches of repair all over them. And this is something that is very, very different from the usual images of the river, the beautiful river that one sees in traditional poems. And the poet rounds off the stanza with two startlingly keen comparisons. Wet stones are likened to sleepy crocodiles and the dry ones to water buffaloes relaxing in the sun. He was there for a day when they had the floods. People everywhere talked of the inches rising, of the precise number of cobalt steps run over by the water rising on the bathing places and the way it carried off three village houses, one pregnant woman and a couple of cows named Gobi and Brinda as usual. The poetic persona, who was presumably a poet, was in Madurai during the flooding of river Vaigai. Though he was there only for a day, that short span of time was more than enough for him to understand the debilitating damage caused by the floods. He ironically notes that 
people are not affected by the tragedy to them it is just a yearly occurrence and therefore they have become numb or maybe they have lost the ability to feel people list out the bare facts and logistics you know the way the flood decimated three houses and carried off a couple of cows and a pregnant woman it is even more ironic that the cows are named but not the pregnant woman she has no identity and she is just another casualty of the flood so ramanujan is here questioning the moral culpability of an insensitive society a society that has lost its ability to feel the new poets still quoted the old poets but no one spoke in verse of the pregnant woman drowned with perhaps twins in her kicking at blank walls even before birth in a scathing critique of poets ramanujan says that the old poets and the new poets are alike in the sense that all of them were busy writing about the beauty of nature or the scenic beauty of the river but none of them wrote about the real human tragedy what is a real human tragedy here the pregnant woman who drowned the tragedy of a pregnant woman who might have been carrying twins in her womb the loss of life here becomes all the more painful as the fragile babies lost their chance even before they came into the world so the image of the drowning woman and the babies in her womb kicking as they desperately sought to survive is something that is very haunting and this haunting image reveals the enormity of the tragedy he said the river has water enough to be poetic about only once a year and then it carries away in the first half hour three village houses a couple of cows named gobi and brinda and one pregnant woman expecting identical twins with no moles on their bodies with different colored diapers to tell them apart so the poetic persona states that the river decides to be poetic once a year and that's when it floods poets tend to romanticize floods and ramanujan is here sarcastically uh, commenting on such poetic expressions poets and commentators are not affected by the tragedy they describe the river in its elemental fury and do not look beyond the scenic images that they create they do not see the pain of the people who have lost their houses or their family members in the deadly flood the society at large remains indifferent to the tragedy that happens before their eyes the pregnant woman who drowned had been expecting identical twins and the babies had they lived might have looked exactly like each other and could only be distinguished by the color of their diapers while we only focus on the statistics of a natural calamity we often forget that there are humans involved in the tragedy the pain of a mother who never got to see her babies the anguish of a man who lost his wife and babies the sheer tragedy of two innocent babies who never got to experience the world these are all real tragedies that people often choose to overlook so that's all for now i hope all of you understood the poem so thank you